Hello YouTube, and we are ready with the next signal. Okay, okay, let's get started. So, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. With you know, it's always how I open our uh, uh, sessions. We do this session once a week on Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, and we are recording this on a three channels at the same time. There's a right here. It's a Facebook. And right here is the YouTube, Going Lava is there, and we have it on our podcast as well. So when I'm done, this will be distributed to our Facebook, YouTube, and podcast. You can consume it however, uh, whatever, however suits you best. We have tons of videos on YouTube and tons of recording on our, our podcast. Uh, simply, simply do it, Guided Real Estate Investing. Um, and we do this, or I hold this session every week, or almost every week. Uh, we skip every once in a while for holidays or traveling, uh, with a clear purpose to engage with you, real estate investors, to have an opportunity to talk to you, to chat with you, to get your questions regarding real estate investing. Um, if you wonder why I speak English and not Hebrew, because we always have a lot of uh, Israeli uh, uh, participant, Hebrew speaker participants, is because this is open to the public and we have people from different parts of the country and actually outside the country uh, in, in different languages. So I have topics that I typically bring, uh, which I have one for today. And you are most welcome to ask your questions on the live uh, or in the notes or the comments later on regarding the topic that I have or uh, or something else regarding real estate investing. I'm going to be uh, focusing on on rental properties for the main part. Um, and I have to say that it's always a pleasure to speak with, uh, to see people that I already uh, seen here before uh, multiple times. So I really appreciate you guys joining again and again. Hello, Nir. Good to see you. I'm sure you have questions uh, on your end. You usually do. I like that. And I know Ronen, uh, you know, we've seen him before. And with that said, feel free to ask questions while I speak <clears throat> or send us questions on the uh, post recording, post live. No problem. The topic for today <clears throat> is what I call the buyer's checklist. How to choose the right property for you. Um, <laughs> how to choose, thank you, Nir. Uh, how to choose the right property for you. Now, what do I mean by that? I wanna to go to a very basic fundamental aspect of investing, which is the prep, which is before you pull the trigger. And that's what I'm talking about. What I see many times is investors are just, actually, for the most part, they're just reacting. Here's a property and you like it or you don't. And you don't even know, uh, uh, hi, Mickey, good to see you, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, you don't even know necessarily <clears throat> uh, if this is the right property for you. It looks nice, it's appear nice, um, and you don't, have a, you, know, like a, you don't have a clear protocol now for you. Now, I, I have to say, analyzing property financially, a rental property financially, I wouldn't say it's necessarily easy, but once you, you know, the hard part is gathering the data, like the rent, the price, the property taxes, the insurance, you know, it may be a little bit more daunting, it may be a little bit less daunting, you make some assumptions, and you can, you can be more conservative, less conservative, but once you have the financial information on a rental property, it's relatively easy to analyze it. And I hope you have a tool that you're using in order to analyze, uh, analyze rental properties. We have one that we use all the time, and we have all our investors um, use all the time, uh, we, uh, you know, I'm going to put a link to it uh, for you. Uh, it is something that we share for free with our active investors. It's something that we sell for a few bucks, you know, with someone who's not working with us. You're most welcome to, to download it and use it. If you don't want to pay for it, just make sure you have an analysis tool. And I'm saying analyzing financial data, once you gather the information, you make some assumption. I wouldn't say it's easy, but it's more doable. It's all about the other parameters, okay? That's where I want you to be ready with yourself, um, you know, or, you know, before you pull the trigger and actually take a minute or two or five and just create your own checklist, okay? Now, the checklist is very individual. It's very related to you because, you know, it could be, a, you know, we could both look at residential rental properties and I have a different perspective and you would have a different perspective of how to go about it. So you don't have to use a checklist that I'm using or someone else. But when I say a checklist, I'm mostly looking at things that are should be and should not be in the property. And let's go through, you know, a uh, uh, few, uh, you know, um, about a couple of things. For example, 
Price, okay, easy, right? Not a problem, price. Um, square footage. Uh, you probably want to put yourself in some sort of a, of, a, of, a, of a range. Minimum square footage, maximum square footage. Schools rating. Minimum school rating, you know, actually maximum is not necessarily a problem. Um, how many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? You want to have that, you know, uh, uh, figure out. Do you want, do you need to have a, you know, a garage? Does it have to be, is garage a must? Can it be one, two car garage, three car garage? Um, carport is okay, you know, it's really a, a question relevant, relevant to the area. By the way, even bedrooms is something that's very relevant to the area because some areas around the countries, they have large families. And when you buy a three bedroom house in, a, in, that, in such area, that would be considered a small house for a lot of the families over there. So it's not maybe attractive. So you have to make it not just what you have in mind, but how is that relatable to the area? Um, um, so we talk about bedrooms. How about uh, the area in terms of demographics? Um, can you actually look into the layout of the house and make sure it, you know, it, it flows correctly? Do you need to have a backyard? Does it have to be fenced? Um, what about things such as uh, a septic tank? Are you going to buy with a septic tank or not? Again, something also very much related to the area. Proximity to shopping centers, to highways, to the, to the major, uh, uh, to the center of the metro. Uh, all of those things um, are very important to you to have and others uh, in order to make sure that when you buy, you, when you look at a property, what does it have, what, you know, what's not included, right? And then you create your own list. Um, let me see other things. Maybe you can suggest other things that are, um, oh, okay. Um, um, will you buy one one? You know, one one, a one bedroom bath bathroom. I don't know. You have to make that decision. Uh, one level story or two level story? Okay, two levels, for example. Uh, again, not everything has a clear cut. And you can say, you know what, a, a, a one story or two story house is a second parameter, but I need to consider it. Um, someone said today, you know, someone brought up today in a conversation I had with a new investor that he wants to buy a property that he could retire it in, to in a few years. Uh, thank you, Neil. We talked about school district. I, I mentioned that, but I appreciate you bringing it up. Someone said about a house that he could retire to. Um, if you're talking about a house, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, retire to, to retire, my suggestion is maybe not to make it a rental property. A house you plan on living in is not necessarily a house you want to buy as a rental property. So maybe divide that, but it's a possibility. Um, you know, the age of the house, right? Um, is something you want to look into, of course. Um, the age of the roof, the uh, is you know pool. You want to have a pool? Yes, no. Um, and there's also a differentiation between above ground pool or dug into the ground kind of a pool. Two different things. Um, things like uh, you know, uh, um, uh, is a corner lot important to you or not? And you know some of those questions that I'm raising, such as corner lot. Such a HOA, thank you. Uh, I, I, I agree with that. By the way, um, Nir, if you already brought HOA, tell me what you think. Are you in favor or you hate HOA? I have my own opinion, but I want to hear your. What is your opinion regarding HOA or anybody else? Um, 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 and and um, you know, some of those questions, if you're buying in your own area or backyard, you'll probably know the answers. Some of those things, uh, you don't always know the answer and you want to consult a professional. For example, um, in Nashville, when we buy rental properties, a, a fenced backyard is important. Actually, many areas, but the fenced backyard is important because uh, it, is, uh, um, it is something that people like because they, a lot of people have pets and a lot of people have kids and they want a fenced backyard. So... Um, you know, something you want to look into or factor in something in, uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, uh, to add into the property. So all of those things. So what I'm saying is you probably want to start with a list. That list can be uh, 10 items long, 6 items long and have that checklist. When you review a house, just make sure, you know, it meets what you want to, you know, uh, what you want to make, what you want it to meet and it's not meeting or doesn't have what you don't want it to, to have, for example, a septic tank, right? Uh, you know, just as an example, or certain school district, in order to avoid such, prop, you know, such uh, uh, properties. And then make that list relevant for, your, for, your, for yourself, because for example, 
I wouldn't buy a house probably that it's less than a thousand or eleven hundred square feet. You know, never say never, but probably would not be attracted to it. Some people would. So just you know, something to to keep in mind. Uh, those kind of things, when you have a working list, you will see that slowly you add more and more items to it. And it kind of helps you to make sure you didn't miss anything when you're reviewing a property. So this is not about buy this house or that house, look at the photos. This is more about taking a step back and getting to the prepare you know, position, be prep on the, um, uh, for, re for looking and reviewing properties. Now, I want to tackle, since Neil brought the, the point of HOA, let's tackle that for a second. Uh, I'll, t I'll share with you what I think. Um, but if there are questions related to the checklist, um, you are most welcome, uh, you know, you should have one with you, you know, make it a dynamic list that you can add items to and you can always use, I call it like a cheat sheet. It can be basic stuff, it can be more complicated stuff, it really depends on how uh, strict you are. Um, I can tell you that a few years back, I had an investor who came to me and she created a list that was so tight and so unachievable, uh, she just made it impossible for her to purchase. And eventually, when we were able to find a property that met that 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 those criteria that she created for herself, she did not purchase the property. And I'm not surprised. We, we knew she's just trying to put herself in a position not to buy. So even the list that she created, the criteria that she created, when we found a property that met one by one by one in terms of size, age, price, cash flow, etc., schools, she still didn't uh, move forward with the transaction. And I'm not surprised because. We knew that uh, that uh, you know something she's trying to do. She's just trying to make it impossible for her uh, um, to um, uh, to do. Now, um, if we have more questions about um, the topic of your checklist or comments or feedback, I'll wait you know a few seconds. I would love to hear your uh, your take, uh, your uh, comments. And if not, we'll move forward with the age only topic that since Nir already brought it up. I'm just going to wait for a few seconds and then um, we'll tackle the HOA, which is somewhat of a topic by its own, but let's just uh, touch on that. Okay, let's talk about HOA. HOA stands for Home Owners Association. In condos, it's usually considered COA, Condo Owner Association. Usually it's referred to the fee that is associated with uh, the house, uh, you know, like, um, uh, owning a house in a certain community. So let's just start by saying not every community has an HOA, right? Typically, I would say it's, you know, it's divided into two groups, condos and, 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 uh, and single families. Now, the single families tend to, some, you know, many times they don't have it, but sometimes they do. And when they do, typically it's not an expensive one. And if it is an expensive one, when I say not expensive, I'm talking about 15, 20, 25 bucks a month or just around that. And an expensive one in my, in my book is maybe 100 bucks or 75 and up per month for the association. Now, when you have a community of single family homes that has an association fee, which is 75 and up, from my experience, it means there's more, more amenities coming in the community, such as a, uh, such as a community pool and maybe some uh, tennis courts and, and you know, playgrounds. Uh, and communities that have minimal association fee, it's just something to, uh, you know, to kind of take care of the community in, in, at large. Now, like Nier said, um, he has mixed feeling. I completely agree with that answer or that feedback because that would be uh, my reaction as well. Let me put it this way. When I am an owner, a distant, a remote owner who lives in one state and have properties in another state, I do like to have an HOA because they're kind of um, opening an eye or wa you know, watching eye on my property. And when something is not okay, they would probably let me know um, before even my property manager will do it. Because the property managers do not visit the property or drive by the property on a weekly basis. They may not see the property for months at a time unless there's a reason or a schedule, um, you know, schedule appointment. So, um, uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, don't expect your property manager to be there on a monthly basis or less than that or more than that. It's more of a, you know, as needed and, and you know, as scheduled for, um, for a visit. Now, so you can't, property managers are not there. The HOA, every HOA is different, but typically HOAs do a walk through the community. My guess, 
once a month, maybe every other month. So they go and they look for violations, they look for problems, uh, they look for different things, and then if there's a violation, uh, they will let you know. I can tell you that I just got a letter from one of my properties uh, that the, I don't know, the, the, the too many bushes and one of the gutters is, you know, kind of iffy. Eh, not a big deal, not a, not a major thing, but they just sent a letter, um, you know, to us. Now, it's very tiny, very minimal. Very annoying. At that point, it's very annoying. I have another house that has, a, you know, in Orlando that has an association. And in order for me to replace the roof fully covered by the insurance because of a storm, which I just did, this, I had to go to the association and apply uh, for a new roof. And then you have to send what kind of material and what kind of what you're doing, etc. And the and the a board meets only once a month, and if, if you just miss the meeting, you have to wait three, four weeks until they meet, and if it's a holiday, then it takes a little bit longer. It took me a month to get the house, uh, the roof approved, and this is a good case because if they were had any additional questions on the roof material, I would have to wait an additional month. I can tell you that when I had to paint my house, the same house, a few years back, I had to go with a... Uh, first paint approval and then some question. It took me over two months to get the, the you know the colors approved. And at the same time, the association was screaming at me and sending a letter: "You need to paint your house. You need to paint your house. You're in violation." So it's very annoying. So to deal with the association, typically it's annoying. But when you look at the uh, at the benefits, where you you have another another set of eyes looking over my rental and telling me if there's anything that needs to be done. When you are a remote investor, I have to say that I like it as long as it's not an expensive one. So to pay a twenty-five bucks a month ish for an association with all the pain and you know and, and annoying that that brings, I think I'm more okay with it than not. Uh, but you know, dealing with them always a nightmare. Always not a nightmare, just annoying. They're very annoying. Not you know, not uh, not slow. Now I uh, slow. Now I will tell you this. If you're buying a property in a, in, a, in, a, in a community that has an association, you just want to make sure by calling, actually emailing the association and making sure you are allowed to place a rental property in the community. Um, typically, it's not a problem, but you want to be, uh, want to be, um, uh, uh, make sure because some communities have restrictions on rentals. And not only that, even if the house you're buying is a rental property at the moment, that doesn't mean when it changes owners, you can still place it as a rental. So you wanna make sure there's no issue with placing your property as a rental when there's a, an HOA or an association in the community and probably wanna get it in writing and not just a verbal, just to be sure. So make sure if there is an association, you handle that correctly. Good. Um, so all in all, I have to say that I'd rather have an association than not having, although it's always a hustle and, and annoying to deal with them when you need stuff from them. So that would be my take on, um, uh, on associations. I'm not a big fan, definitely, but I'm not totally against uh, it well. So a case by case could be, could be, uh, could be defined uh, correctly or the mixed feeling. Do you have any additional questions regarding the HOA or regarding the topic of the checklist or something else regarding um, rental properties? Do let me know. I'm going to wait here. Near, usually you are very, you know, uh, uh, Neil and Bracha, uh, usually uh, 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 an active participant in our sessions. Anyone can ask, of course. You don't have to uh, be one of those people as, uh, at all. I'll wait here for another 10, 20, 30 seconds, because sometimes it takes you know few few good seconds for questions to pop up, um, and I'll be happy to address them. So I'm just going to be quiet now. Okay, since no additional questions are coming in, I want to uh, summarize uh, today's session. So we talked about two main things. We talked about the checklist uh, and we talked, about, uh, we talked about HOA. The checklist is what I ask you to do as investors is actually uh, start your own checklist. What do you need in a property? What to look for? Anywhere from um, 
uh, from square footage and, and uh, you know, uh, how many levels and septic tank and, um, and you know, uh, proximity to shopping center and uh, bedrooms, bathrooms, garage, backyard, etc. All of those things and make it a dynamic list. The more you get you know, active, the more you are involved with investing, the more that list will be, uh, will be uh, uh, you know, uh, dynamic and will change and will get updated. It will help you when you are looking and reviewing a property. So keep that in mind uh, to have that checklist. Um, you, know, you can start with five items, six items, 10 items, and, and let it grow. Uh, we have a checklist that we share with our investors who are active with us, both a checklist for reviewing properties, both a checklist um, you know, for the process, you know, for the entire uh, process itself of kind of, you know, what you need to look for before you start buying, during when you're looking at properties, after going into contract, etc. So you always kind of make sure you're in, you're in order. So we always like to make sure our investors who are active with us get the checklist from us to analyze, review, etc. properties. If you, if you have, uh, we talked about the checklist from the perspective of the quality data, and not the quantity data, not the financial analysis. Financial analysis is a different thing. And then we talked about the HOA and, you know, the, to, to summarize it, how we have mixed feelings with HOAs. It's good to have HOA watching over the, the property and the community. It's probably going to make it a better community and property. And it's not so uh, uh, fun to deal with them when you have to replace the roof, paint the house, some violation. It's actually a bit annoying. Uh, so it's absolutely mixed feelings. Those are the two things we talked about. And since there are no, many, no additional questions, I'm just going to uh, say I want to thank you for joining and participating passively, more actively or less actively. Um, we are doing this every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, California time. You are most welcome to join us live. You are most welcome to view the Facebook recording, the YouTube recording. And of course, we have the, uh, the podcast as well. You can consume it however suits you best. We are on all three channels. Join us. Um, next week, I'm traveling, so I plan to do it from the road. So that's going to be a little bit challenging, but that's uh, what I plan on doing, hopefully without any hiccups. Um, so I'm maybe going to do it from Chicago, maybe going to do it from one of our flip houses. Let's see if that's something I, it, that can be done. Um, if you have suggestions or requests for something that you want us to discuss, cover, please let me know. I'll be happy uh, to do so. And uh, with that said, I want to wish you a great weekend. <clears throat> Sorry, a great weekend. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. And I'll see you next week. And I hope to speak or interact with you in more intimate uh, uh, surrounding, like a one-on-one -on -one call or, uh, or Skype or anything like that. In the future, you are most welcome to join or to contact us for a session to see how we can help you about uh, investing in real estate. You know, in different parts of the country, we are we've been doing it for about 15 years in multiple states with multiple, you know, many many properties, and we are passionate about helping investors such as yourself to buy rental properties. Have a terrific weekend! I'll talk to you soon. See you next week. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye.